Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Arrow's Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Martha, and I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore, though today I'm calling in from Sydney. And uh, my company is called Arrow's Coaching. You can find me at eroscoaching.com. Today we are talking about sex coaching and why you need it. And we are with Mayisha uh, Battle. And uh, she is a certified sex coach and expert. She received her sex coach training from Sex Coach University and has a master's in psychology from the new school in New York City. It's called the New School. And she's a member of the World Association of Sex Coaches and the Holistic Women's Network in San Francisco. Through sex coaching and her sex positive podcast, Down for Whatever, Mayisha provides accurate sex information, instills pride, indifference, and encourages the quest for sexual satisfaction no matter a person's race gender identification, orientation, ability, or age. Mayisha is the owner for Sex for Life based in San Francisco, California, and her work empowers her clients and listeners to embrace better sex for a better life. In today's show, we'll be talking about the feel of sex coaching, what it is, what it isn't, and who it's for. She is a feminist who believes in the power of working directly with individuals and couples to address sexual needs and concerns. She believes sex coaching to be a way for a wide spectrum of people to gain access to non-judgmental help and support they need to be sexually fulfilled. So welcome to the show, Maisha. Thank you so much, Martha. It's so great much, to be here with you. Okay. How is the sound for you? Is there any feedback echo? I did get an echo there. I did get an echo there. But it, but it, yeah, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. There's an echo? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I'm dialing in and there's very little I can do. I'm so sorry. So t- tell me, what is sex coaching and how did it come to be as, as far as you understand? Sex coaching is an emerging field of sexology, and it's it was founded by Dr. Patty Britton, and um, she's been in the world of sexology for over 40, 40 years. Um, so she's she's been around the block. Um, she knows the world of sex education. And she knows that applying the coaching framework to sexology is a great way to get people to be involved with their own um, actualization of their goals with sex. So it's really a combination of sexology and coaching. Great. Some training from Patty. And she is uh, indeed one of the leaders of our field. So what made you decide to be a sex coach as opposed to a sex therapist? What is well, the I was in a master's well, program. A master's yeah. Program. yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. I was in a master's program for master's psychology, program psychology and just trying to figure out what my next steps would be. I mm-hmm. did focus I my did work focus in my master's program on, on sex, sex and gender, and, gender. and mm-hmm. one of the more obvious the roads more would obvious be to go on go and on get, a PhD, get a PhD and then become an then become ASEC become certified, certified uh, sex uh, therapist. Sex therapist. Mm. So that's the American that's the Association, the Association of, of Sex of educators, educators, Counselors, and Therapists. And therapists. Yeah. And up until recently, they've been the foremost um, credentialing body for those working in the sex field, um, the field of sexology. But I actually scheduled a call with Dr. Patty 
who reached out to me after I was um, on an ASEC message board. And she told me about sex coaching. So when I was at this crossroads of deciding, do I continue on with the psychology studies or kind of pivot into another way? She was there to she provide me with information, me about, information about, this about this new field. New field. And it was really exciting because really I knew exciting. that so in a fraction of the time, of the time and, also and also a more focused and concentrated time, concentrated time I would be able to be get able in a room with clients room with and clients help them work through sexual, work through problems, sexual specifically. problems specifically. As opposed to sex therapy, opposed where, to therapy where I would be getting training be getting in training all kinds in of all pathologies kind of and pathologies addressing things, and addressing things um, um, that I didn't see that myself didn't actually see myself wanting actually to wanting help to people with in the future. In the future. I'm a huge mm-hmm. proponent of therapy and I'm a product of therapy. But I, I knew but that there was something I that, that I wanted to do specifically and that sex coaching was the way for me to do it. Beautiful. Yeah. So tell us a little bit um, more how that is different. Yeah, sex so coaching with yeah, sex coaching, sex coaching mm. you're looking at you're where the client at is, is and that tends to be in a very in mentally, a well, mentally state. well state. So all my clients are very high functioning. They may be seeing a therapist to kind of help support them on a day-to-day, low-level anxiety or depression or things like that. Very common things that people struggle with. But they're not likely to be people who are really managing a mental illness um, on a day-to-day basis. So folks that are so sex therapists, that are sex therapists they, have they have training to address training both to address the both mental the illness mental that a person might be facing and they can provide the level of support for, support for uh, any sexual issues, any sexual that, issues that might be tied issues. into that. Tied into that. Mm. But sex coaching really sex coaching approaches really the, approaches the, the person, who person who is relatively who well. Is relatively well. And is struggling and in some area of sex in, area in their personal life. In their personal life. And it's really about, and it's really about moving, them forward. moving them forward. So it's also, so it's also traditional modes of traditional psychology. Modes of psychology. They're, looking They're looking backwards into a person's um, um, yeah, mental health history mental health and history their family of origin family issues, of origin issues. So that might be presenting so sexual, might be difficulties. sexual difficulties. But for me, I look at, me, okay, I look at, um, where are we today and where, um, would, you where like today to would you like to be tomorrow? And how do we build in actionable build steps, in steps for you to, to do that? That's great. Well, that's quite a that's quite a story. What you said about how you uh, change paths that you were set on, and went uh, and uh, be, uh, got all this training to become a sex coach. How long have you been a sex coach uh, now? I'm certified as of uh, the January of this year. January of this year. Okay. So I opened my practice so in February of this year. February of this year. Mhm. Mhm. So, what what are the kinds of clients that you work with? Well, I've been fortunate to well, work been with been clients who are clients individuals, who are and, individuals couples. and couples. So each one of those so arrangements of those provides its own kind of set of issues, right? Of issues, right? Mm. With, individuals, with individuals, I've worked with them on, them on anything from, anything from you, know, you know anxiety issues, issues with dating and sex, with dating and, sex. Mm. and uh, uh, expanding their sexual yeah, repertoire, their as, repertoire I like to say. as I like to say. So somebody who's looking so somebody to looking maybe get to into something that they've been curious about, but they haven't necessarily had the tools and support to explore. Um, so those are more my individual clients. And then with couples, I see a lot of mismatched desire. I also see couples who are maybe experiencing some stagnation within the relationship. And maybe you're maybe suffering you're from a lack of information, information, and that 
that kind of inhibits their ability to express to their partner what they want and what they really need sexually. With both sets of clients, both individuals and couples, I see that there's a general lack of feeling of ownership of over their sexuality. And that is something that I work really strongly to develop with my clients because I think it's so important and I think that people are systematically stripped of their ownership of sexuality in our culture. And then finally, I deal with clients who are, you know, they have these feelings that their bodies have rebelled against them particularly with regard to orgasm. So that for male clients might be that they're ejaculating more quickly than they'd like to. Or for women, it's that they have never experienced an orgasm or they don't experience orgasm as frequently as they would like. Those are, those are my big areas that I work with. Mm, yeah, indeed, they are very common areas um, that I work with with clients as well. I'm sure, uh, yeah. So, sure, yeah. so it's uh, it's really good uh, what you're doing in San Francisco, and um, it it sounds like uh, you already made sure you got all the training that you need, and you are at a great place of uh, being able to help people. Very interested Absolutely. to hear Absolutely. more about your podcast as well. Oh, uh, sure. We have a yeah, we have a break, and we'll we'll come back after the break, and I'd like to hear more about your podcast. Great. Great. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey! the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. And welcome back. We are talking about sex coaching today and uh, why you need it with Maisha Battle. She's a certified sex coach and expert. And you can find her at MaishaBattle.com. That's M-Y-I-S-H-A-B-A-T-T-L-E.com. Um, she's on Facebook and you can find her Sex for Life LLC on Facebook. Welcome back to the show, Maisha. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So... Uh, tell us a little bit about your podcast. Sure. I started sure. my podcast started down for podcast whatever down you know, for when whatever. I was in grad school. Yeah, when I was in grad school. So back in 2013, 2014. 
2014. And my goal and was my goal to was start to explore to this start idea of talking to people idea. about their sex about lives. Their so sex before life. I had any so certification, I, had I just wanted to just wanted start a project, to start a project labor, of love, labor of Love, uh, where I could talk to people uh, about their sex lives and start to demystify some of the more taboo issues around sex that I know a lot of people, a lot of quote unquote regular people, experience. And I wanted to give wanted an outlet to, to these stories to just to stories, make them to seem more commonplace seem more common so that there, if people so were listening, they could, listening, they could find things that they could identify with and maybe identify feel a little bit more comfortable with some of the experiences that they're having or that they want to have. So my first guest so my back, first then, guest um, back then um, was someone who I got put in touch with, and he was a Pilates instructor, but he also did drag, and he played around with uh, S&M and his dating, dating life and dating was getting involved in that. And in, that. in college, and um, in college um, he did sex work to put, put himself through school. So I thought his story was so a great one to launch off one with, one and off I was and really excited to, really excited to, you know, kick this off. And, you know, since, this then, off. and since then, I've been, I've been interviewing people from, you know, you know, feminist writers feminist to writers, and scholars to, and to uh, trans, to, uh, individuals, trans and individuals and people who are poly. Uh, I interviewed someone who was a uh, virgin until the age of 32 and talked to her about that. So it's a really good exploration so really good of exploration all kinds of aspects of sexuality. Aspects of sexuality. And I will continue and to do it. You're, you, we actually have an interview have an together, interview and that will be going up next month. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> so yeah, that was a great down for interview. whatever. Mm, thank you. And um, how how will people be able to find your show? Yeah, if you go to my website, yeah, myushabattle.com, my um, there are several mm-hmm. icons there, and um, the speaker icon, if you click on that, it'll take you to the uh, podcast, and then you can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, iTunes, Stitcher, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. Mm, Thanks. So be sure to tune in to Down for Whatever. And uh, this podcast aims to provide accurate sex information, instill pride in difference, and encourage the quest for sexual satisfaction no matter a person's age, gender, identification, orientation, ability, or race, or age. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part of working with clients as a sex coach? That's a very, very good question. Um, question. There's so much that I love about the work, work, but I think my favorite part is being able to validate and reframe experiences for my clients. A lot of our sexuality is shaped by the opinions and judgments of others as we're growing up, right? So I like being in a position where I can tell a client, well, you know, a lot of people have had a similar experience to you, and, you know, these are some tools to kind of manage. Um, sometimes just saying that can put a person at ease, and I get a lot of joy from that and being in a position to do that for my clients. I also give a lot of permission for my clients to state their real desires because sometimes if you have a lot of guilt or shame about the things that you want or like, you're not likely to voice them. Uh, Not even with your friends, people that you confide everything else with, you might not even talk to them about sex. So I provide that space for a person to really delve into what it is they want. Um, And that comes out a lot in particular when I do dating coaching, um, which I love to do as well. Some clients just, they hesitate to really say what it is they want because they're afraid that it will limit their dating experience. But in my experience, when you state what you want, you're really going to be putting it out there for people to pick up who identify with those things that you really want. And that can be really a a powerful experience for people. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Uh, what's um, what? Uh, I I guess you have client confidentiality, so it's not really 
possible to talk about um, uh, what are your success uh, stories so far? Well, I can give general information, um, and I think it ties into your previous question about what I love about the work. My, I, I do have a couple clients that I worked with through dating. Um, one in particular is someone who came to me and said that they wanted to really expand what it is they had experienced sexually. Um, this is someone who is really a, a motivated and smart person, but sex just was sort of a blind spot for them. And I find that a lot with my clients. They give 110% to all other aspects of their lives, but sex kind of is an afterthought. So they really wanted to explore this. It was time for them. They had kind of a, a pivotal point in their life or an event happened that just really inspired them to put some energy behind this, and they started working with me. So, yeah, we got them involved in some sex communities that they previously were a bit shy in exploring, um, and it was a really big I would say heart opening and experience opening and eye opening uh, opportunity for them to work with me and to give them permission to say, you know, these are the sex shops you need to go to because they have what you're looking for. These are the dating kind of prompts that you need to put in your profile so that you'll attract people that are into, you know, the kind of thing that you're into. And in particular, this person was looking to explore kink. So that was really powerful for them to to know, okay, there's someone who understands what I want. They don't think I'm crazy or weird, and they're providing me with these direct channels to the things that I'm looking to explore in a safe and contained way. And, yeah, that was a – it was kind of a, a short commitment. Uh, we had just a couple sessions, but with that – they were really able to take off, and my follow-up with them was that, you know, they were dating someone who was really interested in doing things with them that they were interested in, so they found a partner who was kind of down for whatever, um, and super happy with that experience. Mm. Sounds like um, it's almost like a 360 turnaround. For sure. Yeah, I think the position was when they came to me, um, you know, open, but a little bit intimidated and, you know, scared to, to take that step into the unknown. And on the outside of it was, you know, was confidence. And, and, you know, pride that pride they had that done these things that they never would have thought uh, a thought few years ago that they would do. Yeah. And just um, satisfaction just because they had taken that risk yeah. and really gone after an experience that gave them a lot of joy. Mm. That's really great. And... Uh, so this is uh, one of the um, success stories that you have. Absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. I'm happy to share more, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I really love that story because it's um, not one of the traditional like, you know, I've I'm really suffering. Really it's suffering. more like it's I'm more I'm ready to prioritize. Ready to prioritize. Sex. And I love working with co- love with clients that are ready to prioritize back. Mm. That's great to, to hear that. And um, it's definitely very meaningful, challenging work that uh, we do. What are some of the challenges that you already are facing right now? Well, the challenges that I well, face that I most frequently involve people not knowing what I do, which is why I really wanted to speak to you today and um, 
kind of give voice to the field of sex coaching and help people understand what it is that we're we're doing on a day-to-day basis. Um, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of folks out there who they would pay to have a coach come in and help them with their career um, and get them to that next level. And that's becoming more commonplace. But sex coaching still has this air of mystery around it. And so I do a lot of education, particularly with the World Association of Sex Coaches, um, through writing articles, which you can see on my website, about sex coaching, why we're here, what we do, and the different approaches. So, um, yeah, that's a big challenge for me because if people don't know that we're here, then they don't know that they can reach out to us. But um, But, once people um, finally do reach out to me and they're interested, I think one of the challenges is um, is, um, really focusing the work to be tailored to that specific individual. individual. It's it's something that gives me a lot of joy and something that I think think is really lacking in our society. We love, like... Like blanket approaches blanket to solving problems, to like solving problems, five like steps to, five steps you, know, to you know, improve your love improve life. And, love and it's, life. while that's and great, while that's I think great, that the real meat the of real what we do as coaches is, coaches is look at the whole person, the whole person and, see and see what are the areas of the areas life, of be it, life, you know, mental, it emotional, emotional, spiritual, spiritual that might be blocked might or be blocked might be presenting, or presenting this person some obstacles for obstacles really getting what they want out of their sex life. Of their sex life. And, so, and so while it's challenging, while it's challenging to assess that to assess with every that single person every single that I work with, that I, work I think with, it's, it's really rewarding, really and, rewarding and it provides and the it most provides positive results. Positive so it's not just saying, so you know, I'm going to move you through these you through 10 weeks with me, weeks with um, me. and at the um, end you're going to be a sex be superstar. Sex superstar. Um, but it's more, but it's more putting, putting myself putting in myself a position in where I'm there as a resource for them and they can them, utilize my services as they see fit. And, you know, that might not be... In a way that I think that is I think best, but I'm there best, to support my clients support and their individual, and their individual needs. needs, right? That's great. Okay, we have a break, and uh, we'll come back and discuss more after this. Thank you. Sure. sure. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Carrie Ann Larson. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OhmTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in a beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. There is no death, only a change of worlds. Chief Seattle. Deborah Livingston is an award-winning intuitive psychic medium whose international services include mediumship, spiritual assessment, animal communication, and spiritual mentoring. She is a published author and a trained shaman. Deborah provides evidential messages from spirit and departed loved ones. Learn more at devlivemedium.com. That's D-E-B-L-I-V medium.com. I want to thank my mommy for loving me so much. For taking taking me to the doctor when I broke my foot. For for leaving me alone when I wanted to be alone. And And now, now, as a grown-up, I'm thankful for being able to take care of you, my dear mom. For taking you to your therapies. For understanding that sometimes you simply want to be alone. Roles change without us noticing. That's why AARP gives you the information to provide even better care for your loved one. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council.
Welcome back to Eros Revolution. This is where sex and spirit meets. And today we're with Maisha Battle and we're talking about sex coaching and why we need it. And you can listen to this show on the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you'll be able to listen to this show without needing to download any app. That's really easy and convenient. And you can share that with your friends right now. Welcome back. Thank you. So, so Maisha, I always have Maisha. I always have this um, uh, question for all my guests, and uh, I like to ask you the same uh, today. What do you feel is the link between sex and spirit? And I'm glad that you asked that question to all your guests because I think it's a fantastic one. Um, the link between sex and spirit for me is it's really undefinable, but it is there. Um, I think there's something that you can tap into, which is your whole self. When you take ownership of your sexuality and when you put yourself first, and I don't mean that in a selfish way. I mean that in a way that is not denying yourself and not denying the things that truly enrich you as a sexual being and I think that there's no real way for you to be a really fully fulfilled human being without addressing your sexuality and your needs in the realm of sexuality because it really is transformative Um, it's an opportunity for you to connect with other people. Um, But the best way to connect to other people is by being your true self. And I think that the reason that I deal with clients who, you know, are having this struggle with their partners is because we don't really give people the chance and the opportunity to learn about themselves sexually. Um, and it's really important to bring that to light and to start to give my clients the words, because I think that speaking about your sexuality is incredibly empowering. It's something that has been stripped away from us, um, our ability to talk about sex and our education around sex. And by giving people this voice, it is almost a way for them to channel their sexuality and by channeling their sexuality and giving voice to it I feel that that translates to deeper sexual connections and a more fulfilled spirit. I think that when I start to do work with clients around sexuality it touches upon so many other aspects of their lives when they make this this adjustment because it, it can be small and subtle but it could also be so impactful to their whole being. Um, It can reframe the way they look at themselves and the world, in particular around their bodies and, you know, how they use their bodies. Uh, Giving permission to use their bodies for pleasure means they're tapping into something that, you know, may have been really denied to them previously. And I don't think that we're doing anybody a service by denying people pleasure. Um, I feel like a little bit, I mean, I've been told that my work is God's work, and uh, I kind of believe that because I am helping people to reach this level of intimacy and connection and understanding of their full spiritual needs. Mm, Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I'm very curious to know, besides doing uh, sex coaching, do you run workshops? What are some of your workshops? Yes, I do. Um, I've recently launched a workshop um, called Lust for Life. And this is a workshop for women, and it's a holistic approach to looking at their sex lives. Um, That is actually co-facilitated by an acupuncturist here in San Francisco, and her name is Lauren Koneko-Jones. Her company is called Well in the West, 
And she and I teamed up because we were noticing some parallels in the work that we do with women. Um, as an acupuncturist, she works with women around issues of infertility, um, low sex drive, and um, her approach to addressing those issues is obviously from um, a Chinese medicine perspective. Um, but for me, it's a more psychological and obviously sex coaching perspective. So the two of us um, really gel well together and provide this kind of well-rounded curriculum for our participants. So um, we're looking to do that. Uh, we had one, our um, inaugural one, uh, this past July. And um, we're looking to do another one either in this, this fall or winter. And one of the things that we focus on is around cycles of desire. So that's really the premise is looking at the ebb and the flow of sexual energy and how to tap into it when perhaps it's a little bit lower for ourselves. That's Lauren's uh, area of expertise. And then for me, it's really looking at um, the cycles that exist for us around, you know, how we are in the world as women and how that can affect how we are sexually with partners or even solo. Uh, so we draw, or I draw largely from the work of Emily Nagoski um, and her book, Come As You Are, uh, for that, where I look at the dual model of uh of sexuality, of excitation and inhibition, and really delve into, well, what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis for women? And what are the unique challenges that women face that would um, keep them from experiencing their sexuality fully? So that's a really exciting workshop that we're, we're offering. And in the future, we're hoping to expand that into a full-on retreat for women. That's great. It is really exciting. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, any other like upcoming projects that you have? Upcoming projects? Well, I will be doing. Well, recently I did an icebreaker um, in San Francisco. So that's something that I'm looking to do uh, more frequently because the first one was a, a success. And what happens during an icebreaker is I make myself available uh, for any type of sex questions um, that the group has. So the first one was held at uh, a wine bar here in San Francisco. So we offered a wine special. Um, and, you know, I encourage people to drink and get loopy and ask all their sex questions to me. <laughs> um, and it went really well. We had a lot of different um people and backgrounds and so the questions were varied and I thought that that was important because it's great to do the one-on-one -on -one work and it's great to do um, workshops with groups of people as well uh, but it's also kind of fun to throw yourself into an environment where you don't really know what's coming and also provide people with an opportunity to benefit from the information that other people are curious about. I really like that too, and I think that's one of the um, the goals that I have with the podcast is, you know, you might be interested in one topic that I cover in the podcast and then not know that, you know, there's other stuff out there that you might be interested in too. So with the icebreaker, it's, um, you know, people throw their questions into a bag and it's all anonymous, but I read the questions out loud in front of everyone. So, you know, there were uh, a lot of gay men there and a lot of women, and so there were issues that didn't necessarily translate across those groups, but I felt it was really an important part of, like, sexual education for us all to know and share this information. Um, so that was really great, and that's an offering that I'll be doing hopefully on a monthly basis in the Bay Area. This month I'd like to do it um, at a location on the East Bay, and I'm currently looking for spaces for that. Um, but in terms of other upcoming projects, I've just been writing a lot. So on my website, there's a lot of writing, as I mentioned before, about sex coaching. But one piece in particular that I wrote recently was about why it is so difficult for us to talk about sex. Um, and 
that's a really important project for me. It's certainly highlighted in the podcast um, and the work that I do one-on-one and in workshops. But I also want to put myself out there as as an advocate and an educator around what are the real reasons why we're not talking about sex. And so that piece is up on my website um, for people to peruse, as well as other stories and articles that I've written. Um, But I'm really proud of that because it explores why, in particular, in the United States, it it really is hard to talk about sex and people shouldn't feel bad about not having the skills because we really don't prepare people to have the skills Mm. and the knowledge to talk about sex. And it's a huge barrier to people enjoying themselves, unfortunately, Mm. but it's, it's the reality that we all live in. Mm. That's great. Um, Anything else that you're working on? say maybe a book um, or... um, I'm not working on a book um, <laughs> yeah there's a, the, a kind of side project that I'm hesitant to talk about but um, if you tune in to the podcast in December um, there is a kind of teaser for a project that I'm working on that will be uh, hopefully a web series that I'm working on with someone um, but I'm, mm. I'm hesitant to give too much information about that because I'm really excited about it, um, and I think it's going to be a really fun way to explore sexuality through the forum of a, a web series. And we're, we're looking at putting that on um, YouTube and hopefully setting it up through Patreon so people can support the work that way. It's going to be a really fun project and not, not as, I guess, heady as some of my other stuff. <laughs> But I, I'm excited. Mm. Mm. That's great. Sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. And I look forward to hearing more about it in December. Great. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks so much. It's been, yeah. Uh, really uh, a great opportunity to talk to another sex coach. Mm. Yeah. Well, our, our work is uh, not... Um, easy is not as glamorous as people make it out to be we do face our challenges um, and we do what we do because we're passionate about it and we believe in what we're doing and um, for those of you out there who are listening to this show uh, do not hesitate to reach out to Maisha Battle and she is at MaishaBattle.com that's M-Y-I S-H-A Battle.com and uh, it is also the same on Twitter. And she is Sex for Life LLC on Facebook. Um, she has her company is called Sex for Life. And she's based in San Francisco, California. Her work always empowers her clients and listeners to embrace better sex for a better life. And for me, I'm based in Singapore. I, I run Arrows Coaching. I've been doing this for seven years now. And I... I um, my my website is uh, eroscoaching.com. We we should have a break coming up soon. <laughs> and just to summarize what we've been talking about today, we've been talking about what is sex coaching, um, how Maisha decided to be a sex coach as opposed to a therapist, the issues that she works with, and some of her successes. So more after this break. Best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Come heal yourself. 
what is healing healing is nothing but connecting with your all knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you through this show we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high please join me your host monica goel every sunday 7 pm pacific namaste hi this is christina ricci with rain every 2 minutes another american is sexually assaulted if you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted you are not alone Help is just a call or click away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Please call 1-800-656-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, or visit RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Welcome back to the last segment of today's show. We're talking about sex coaching and why we need it with Maisha Battle. She is a certified sex coach and expert and um, she received her sex coach training from Sex Coach University and has a master's in psychology from the New School in New York City. She's a member of the World Association of Sex Coaches and the Holistic Women's Network in San Francisco. And uh, you can go to her website, Maisha Battle, where you can sign up for her monthly newsletter featuring special offers, updates, and learning opportunities. And if you'd like to work with her, you can set up a free 20-minute consultation. And also, if you mention Arrow's Evolution, you'll be able to receive 20% off your first session. That's very generous. So be sure to take advantage of this offer. Just mention Arrow's Evolution and you'll receive 20% off your first session. Uh, so Maisha, you know, um, we've been talking a lot about uh, what what uh, you do and what you help clients with. Uh, what are your advice that you might have for some of our listeners out there um, in different demographics? for instance men, sure women. um sure um, yeah with um men and women obviously the issues can be different but the root cause of a lot of sexual difficulties that a person might seek out sex coaching for is lack of confidence with their sexuality and a lack of understanding of um, what's possible with sexuality. So I mentioned earlier that I have clients who feel as if their bodies have rebelled against them. And I would say my best advice to those who are feeling that way is that your body is doing what your body should be doing. And we are interconnected in so many ways that we are not aware of on a conscious level. So stress, for instance, and anxiety are huge, huge areas that affect our sexual abilities. And these are things that aren't easily tackled. Um, it takes a lot of time and energy to devote to understanding what are the things that are causing stress and anxiety in your life and how can you alleviate them. One of the ways to kind of take a step back from having a, you know, from experiencing a sexual issue is to go back to what I said earlier, is that your body is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Um, and that that's okay, that we cannot demand perfection 100% of the time. And in fact, when we demand perfection of our sex lives or any aspect of our life, we're setting ourselves up to be very disappointed. And I, for one, would rather be comfortable, happy, and, you know, excited about my sex life because I've allowed for whatever happened to happen um, than to try to force something that doesn't feel completely joyful. So, you know, I, I do a lot of encouraging with my clients to bring play back into the bedroom 
to bring anticipation back into the bedroom because that can sometimes help to take the strain off of this goal-oriented mentality of getting to an orgasm. If you're really you know, calm and open to possibilities, um, you can enjoy the ride for what it is and not be so focused on the perfect ending. Because the perfect ending, we all know, doesn't really exist in real life. Um, so why should we demand it of ourselves in the bedroom? Um, and then getting back to the discussion of sex and anxiety, I mean, we live in a time where there's so much anxiety-inducing information and activity around us all the time. Sometimes it's good to unplug from all of that and to center yourself. And by center yourself, I really mean focusing on the things that bring you pleasure and eliminating to the best of your ability the things that induce stress. And that sounds pretty simple, but for a lot of people, it's really, really hard. And that's that's where coaches come in. We can help you to parse out, okay, you think that you're not stressed out by the fact that you wake up in the morning and immediately check your email inbox. But what happens is this spiral of things that are anxiety-inducing um, that can be avoided if you say in the morning, take a cup of tea before you start your day. So it's simple things that you can implement that are harder to see when you're living them, and they're easier for an outside party to point out to you as ways to bring calm and centeredness into your life. So again, it's um, the simple advice of <laughs> eliminating stress and anxiety, which as I just said, it's not simple. It sounds simple, but it's not. Um, and also, you know, just trying to give yourself a break and understand that every sexual situation is an opportunity to enjoy pleasure and give ourselves that that gift, essentially. And, you know, if we can allow ourselves to take a step back and just focus on the aspects of sex that are really ple pleasurable rather than focusing on the end goal of orgasmic release, I think we could all be a lot more satisfied. Mm, that's really great advice. That's um, great advice, uh, uh, all-round advice for all of us uh, when it comes to mm -hmm. life. That that That's indeed a lot of stress that we face all the time. And we don't even realize this. We just get used to it and we think that's, that's normal. But actually, our body is uh, suffering. It's actually at overdrive, and we are going through fight or fleet mode uh, all the time. And you combine, you multiply that with like number of years, and uh, no wonder our body is uh, breaking down. And you know, we just keep being really hard on ourselves and push ourselves even harder. And uh, that really does affect our sex drive. And um, mm -hmm. um, the, the things that you, you talked about, anxiety and um, being in acceptance, being uh, in your body, that's all really valuable uh, messages for our listeners out there. So thank you so much for coming on to today's show and sharing with us everything that um, you have. I, I certainly wish you all the best. I, I can tell you're very passionate and eloquent about uh, what you're doing. And... Um, uh, once again, people can uh, work with you by going to your website, subscribing to your newsletter and uh, set up a free 20 minute consultation and also 20% mm -hmm. off your first session. If you mention Eros Evolution, is, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, um, I just wanted to thank you for having me on as a guest, Martha. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the opportunity, especially to talk about a profession that I am super passionate about, that I love doing, um, and is my life's work. Um, it's, it's an honor to be able to share that with a larger audience um, and hopefully be of service to that audience as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, you know, I'm, I was also very happy to come on your show. 
Okay, so uh, be sure to check out Maisha's um, website, and it's Maisha, M-Y-I-S-H-A, battle.com. Uh, next week, we have uh, another guest, and her name is Emma Jory, and she's a Pilates instructor in Kuala Lumpur, KL. Um, I've had quite a number of miss uh, with her, trying to get her on the show. Um, you know, she couldn't get on it. And uh, 